As quilters, we all have certain parts of quilting that we like more than others, or perhaps just that we enjoy more than others. Maybe it's a bit challenging to do a particular task or another, or sometimes we don't always have the time to finish a project from beginning to end, and it sort of gets set aside, and we get excited, we start another one, and then we have more in the pile and more in the pile, and before long we realize, we need to get some quilting finished. I'm Leah Louise from Inspired Quilting by Leah Louise, and this is where I am today. We've had really hot weather, and so my last video I was showing you how I do my spray basting. And I really love it. It's, it's a huge time saver. It works well for me, and it's great for my fabric. I don't have to use all those pins. I sometimes worry about some of those safety pins have, have a really large diameter, and I don't like poking holes all over my quilt unnecessarily. So I love the spray based. It works wonderful. I will go ahead and add a link that you can uh, check it out. Now, I also think sometimes putting those safety pins around the outer edges can be helpful. If you have a particularly wide backing that you haven't trimmed down to just a few inches, you want to make sure it doesn't flip around to the back and get caught up in your quilting. So there's always a time and place for every kind of tool that we have, and it's just a matter of finding what works for you. But today what I want to show you is a super simple, easy machine quilting pattern. It's not even a pattern because it's all free form, and that's what makes it wonderful. We all got really excited many, many years ago when they talked about quilt in the ditch. Oh, we can do that. That's so easy. We just follow the seam. Well, I don't know about y'all, but for me, sewing in that seam was never easy. I, I tend to have the little wavy lines. It was in, it was out, and if I didn't press my seam right, it was visible. So that never worked for me, and what I did is I used the quarter-inch quilt line, and I would I would quilt a quarter inch outside the seam, and that worked really well for me. Well, with a walking foot, it gets even easier. And I'm going to talk to you about the walking foot and show you how it works. But by doing this, you don't have to use a straight line. It's easy just to use sort of a slow meandering swerve, and it's very simple. And it's quick. You will get quilts finished before you know it. Just layer your backing down with your spray base. Put the batting on, a little more spray base with your quilt top, and you're all set. Now, I have been known to quilt a baby quilt with just a piece of flannel, quilt top, and flannel, and that's it. It's great for a nice, lightweight summer quilt. So well, there's lots of options. Don't limit yourself and not do something because you think there's a certain way you have to do it, and therefore it's it's keeping you from doing it. So find a way that works, and let's get these quilts finished. I have a small stack over here just to show that I really have been working, and these are all quilted and ready to go, but I have plenty more. So let's get started. I want to show you how to do this quilting method. I'm ready to quilt, and I'm going to use my walking foot. And the little arm fits over the thumb screw that holds the needle, and this goes around the shank where the presser foot fits. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove my regular presser foot that I just use for standard sewing, and I'm going to put my walking foot on. And remember, the difference with this are these feed dogs. Can you see those on the bottom? See how they go up and down? That's what pulls the upper fabric of the quilt sandwich along at the same rate as the bottom fabric. That way everything moves together. You're less apt to get bunching and wrinkles and all those other problems that can occur. And I do, there we go. Get that tucked in there. Move my threads to the back. Now I am just going to do some very easy basic sewing uh, today with some, some quilting. I have my quilt sandwich all together. I glued it. So I have my backing and my batting and my quilt top. And just by applying the spray based, everything is put together. I don't have to worry about it falling apart, coming loose, or sewing over a pin. Now there is a video how to to apply the spray based and I will link that above but right now what I want to do is get this quilted so ordinarily you can choose any number of a different 
different styles of of quilting with a walking foot. A lot of times folks will just take a straight line, but that is not the easiest for a beginner. Beginners generally are learning how to sew straight. And while that sounds silly, there there is a challenge there to not get it wavy. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with the easiest and that's a wavy line because that kind of comes natural. So I start at the corner and just a tad off the corner. And what I do is I make my stitch length just a little bit longer. And you can read about the uh, walking foot, what you may or may have to do with your tension to make those adjustments. And if yours didn't come, your machine didn't come with a walking foot, they are available. And I have those links down below as well. So what I'm going to do is just sew some long curves. And I'm going to go from corner to corner between my charms. This is just a basic charm square quilt. It takes 80 charm squares. And actually it's 81 because this one I did square and it's nine by nine. Now I do make an effort to kind of hit that intersection where all of the corners come together. It reinforces the corners and it kind of keeps me on a straight line. And if you stop, and I stopped with my needle up there, and I do recommend that when you stop, you stop with your needle down. One of the advantages of sewing diagonally is you don't have quite so much fabric on the inside of your sewing machine because you have the diagonal down the center is your longest dimension, your longest distance. So what you're going to roll up over here really is just the corner. So we just are going to kind of tool along here and do some swirly lines, curvy lines, sorry, curly, swervy, whatever that word might be or whatever it means to you. And there's no right or wrong. It's just a matter of being relatively consistent so everything kind of sort of looks the same. So I'm just going to get to the end of this row and show you what we've done. As you can see, I'm using a light thread on top. Because there's so much low volume fabric, I wanted to use a cream color thread rather than um, anything with a color because I didn't want the color on the low volume. Um, I could have certainly used a color here and then just switched threads out, which is certainly doable. The other thing is I used a gray on the back, so it's not quite white. It's not going to be as stark. It'll blend a bit better with those colors. Now, when I'm doing my quilting, I start in the center and I work to one side, then I'll turn my quilt around and work to the other side. So do you see just these long wavy lines? They look really nice. And if one's a little deeper and, you know, this is a shallow wave, this is deeper, that's okay because it's all going to look the same. We're never going to make two this exactly alike simply because that just isn't possible. Uh, you know, we can try and, and we can replicate, but there's always going to be just a little smidge of it off. So I go ahead and go into it knowing that it's all going to be a little bit different. And so I'm going to do my curves. I'm going to go down this row and we're just going to keep swinging around back and forth. And you know what I forgot are my quilting gloves. But fortunately, this is a very lightweight quilt and it's a small quilt, so I shouldn't have any problem. But it does help me to guide. I, I'm finding myself grabbing this with my hands and with my quilting gloves, it's a whole lot easier to get a grip. So when I maybe change to the next row, I'm going to grab those because I do notice that I'm missing them. And they do come in handy. There are a couple different kinds that you can get. And I've tried a few, and there's not a huge difference between them. It's just a matter of what fits for you, what you like. I like the textured finger fingertips because that way it gives me a, a better grip. And they're 
all stretchy, which is kind of nice because it gives a bit of support to your hand so you don't get quite so tired. Um, you know, giving that extra squeeze, it sort of helps you endure some long hours of quilting. Of course, I don't go quite that long. And here we go. We're back to the end of this row. Let me grab my gloves. I'll be right back. I have my gloves on. The tips have, like I said, it's a little bit of that um, coating, that plastic coating that they use or rubber, whatever. And it sort of makes them look a little dirty. They're not, but it is a great little uh, protection for your hands as well as gripper. It just makes it a lot easier to use. Now you notice my, my swerves here, they look really good. So I'm just going to pick up on the next one. And I'm just, notice how I'm just using my hands to steer my fabric and it's gentle. I'm not doing really long, sharp, or I should say short, sharp turns. And if you do have to stop, always make sure your needle is down. I do try to stop at the point, but I couldn't quite get that far. And I'm just going to speed it up a little. And we'll get moving. And I love that my quilt sandwich stays in place so well with the spray baste and you can see how everything is laying nice and smooth on the back and no problems no puckers it's perfect so let me go ahead and finish this half of the quilt and then I will turn it over and show you how we do the other side let's go And you can see how nice these wavy lines look. They look great. They space across nicely. And what I'm going to do now is go back to the center and work to the other side of the quilt. So that means I turn it around and I'm going to start at the other corner. And let me get my thread here. And what I'm going to do is work this direction just like I did before. And you notice initially I, I sort of always start with the same the same curve and it's kind of fun to go the other way as well. Now depending on right hand, left hand, what direction you tend to uh, prefer, you may find that one is easier for you. So just play with it a little bit and see, see how that works. But what I'm going to do now is go ahead and finish quilting this and then I'm going to show you a finished quilt. All we'll have left to do is the binding. So let's go. I do want to point out while I'm doing the quilting is I just noticed back there I had a little bit of a, a bunching the fabric the quilt bat uh, the quilt sandwich wanted to come together and I just use my hands I don't stretch it but just hold it so the fabric all lays nice and flat and then just let the the walking foot do the work for you it's going to guide the fabric at the correct rate all you have to do is make sure it's laying there straight to be picked up along the way. So let's go ahead and get this finished.
and that's it. Everything is quilted. I'm just going to trim this up and square my uh, quilt sandwich together uh, in a nice straight square. And then I'm going to put the binding on. But I just want to show you how the back looks. And I'll give you a, a bigger shot in a minute. But just how these wavy lines all work together. They look wonderful. And it's a quick and easy way. You see how, how fast I did that? You saw every bit of the quilting. And it doesn't take long at all. So I encourage you to give this a try. It's a wonderful way to quilt your very first quilt or to get one finished that you need done right away. So glad you were here to share this with me. Thanks so much for being here. Oh, don't forget, I'd love to have a thumbs up. Thank you so much.